ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Homelessness and Poverty Committee of the Los Angeles City Council. Uh, my name is Marquise Harris Dawson, the Chair. Um, we're joined by uh, my colleague, Council Member Kern Price. Um, we'll be joined uh, momentarily by Council Member Mike Bonin, who is standing at the gate. Uh, but while we are waiting for Mr. Bonin, we have uh, a number of speakers that have signed up for multiple items. In the Homelessness and Poverty Committee, if you sign up for multiple items, we give you a total of two minutes to speak on the items that you signed up for, and you can divide those uh, 120 seconds in any way that you see fit. Uh, the first multiple item uh, speaker is Mr. Red Chief Hunt Michael. Good evening to the board. Um, I want to touch a little bit about policing and homelessness. I don't know if they match too well because I don't know if the Los Angeles uh, Police Department has been trained to work with the homeless in the outreach program. Um, more sources. I think the homeless need jobs. I don't know if LAPD can provide jobs. That's where the homeless initiative started. Uh, housing, homes, and transportation, uh, which we should be focusing on instead of the police department. So if we can allocate some of the budget from the police department to uh, allocate that for homeless, transportation, and homes, I think that we would do a lot better, uh, make a lot more progress, and have volunteers come in and do it because people are scared of LAPD. Um, let's see, what else did I want to touch on? Uh, the Housing Authority, uh, Prop, um, I guess it would be number two or three, but the Housing Authority, Mark Ridley, Thomas, and the County Board of Supervisors have $366 million coming down for homeless and, and housing for the people like that. A lot of them cannot live in housing and, 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 and things like that because they can't live in four walls. My suggestion here is that we build a homeless park uh, for men and women, get the people out of Skid Row and things like that, give them their own community, put 10 showers on each side, give them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and stop taking them to jail and cut the budget down. That's the best ideal in the country. Uh, a lot of them can't live in four walls. So if you guys take my suggestions and get the homeless park going where you have RVs and cars where they can park the homeless vehicles and they have 10 by 10 spaces, you guys will save a lot of money uh, economically and the county a lot of money. But the $366 million the initiative is coming down and uh, all the organizations should take advantage of that uh, people's districts. So utilize that money very well. Next 10 years. Yvonne Autry, Mr. Herman, Puppet, you guys can all come up to the desk. Okay. You're on, Ms. Autry. Please start the clock. Okay, yes, uh, thank you for an opportunity to speak. Again, it's most important that we have money not allocated for uh, the uh, development of lofts, condominiums, specifically 7th and, and Maple. We need affordable housing so that we can remove the homeless out of that swath of police brutality. In the rezoning process of downtown, especially uh, the row, so we know what your vision is, but we are the indigenous people, as with imperialism, you displace... Yeah, you displace and, and you um, dehumanize those that are the most economically challenged, whether it's women, veterans, men, people that are physically challenged. So again, we're speaking um, not only for the homeless that needs housing, and that is, you know, you have this bureaucracy like excessively low and low, low, low. Housing that is affordable for poor people, okay, in plain English. And also the hygienic standards that need to be maintained. The police have their horse dropping, spreading the germs. So you're actually seeking to exterminate those people. That is the truth. We do not want to be used as text specimens, training purposes. We're not to be used as sex slaves or as food, right, or as uh, genetic experimental test specimens for the vampires, the cannibals, not to be used 
to, um, for the organ donors, for the Jews in Israel, because this is a human harvest of melanated people primarily on Skid Row, or anyone put in that category. We know you're feeding off of that. The homeless is an, homelessness is an industry. So we know maintenance of that status quo. I'm speaking against that again. Also, the uses of microchips and medication and also the electronic weapon to debilitate and dehumanize black women and other women to make us old and ugly, damaged and unattractive so the white and Hispanic women get all of the husbands and we're then used or subjugated as sex slaves on the side. Expose of this Thank maintenance you. of status quo. Mr. You will not Herman. return to slavery in this new world order because this is hidden. And Please some people be quiet. Thank you, Mr. Herman. For the record, in regards to the statement of interest of the United States, I request a preliminary injunction on the loss of community services and regarding homelessness and poverty. Why? Because people suffer a regressive consequence. And what is that regressive consequence? Well, it has to do with one basic issue, portable public toilets and bathrooms. Why can't people have a place to have hygiene? You can't make peanut butter jelly sandwich. You can't stomp on some oranges and provide, as Michael Hunt, the red chief, said, you should provide the very basics. And Jose Weizar, the fat, bald gentleman who is in CD14 regarding this item of bathrooms, has not provided any at all. And then we go into item one. Service authority emergency response teams working with the Los Angeles Police Department. Well, let me tell you about, first of all, about the police department. They are not social workers, nor are they part of mental health. And when it comes to the accessible housing program, it is usually the LAPD who remove you from your housing programs and ensures people with disabilities have an equal opportunity opportunity to rent, enjoy where they rent, and use affordable rental housing. The same fucked up way you pulled me out of my house in 2008 under rent control. Thank you. 42 USC 1983. Fuck you. And then when it comes to road diets and housing and restrooms and streets, what better way to say it than to bring it to the attention of the world Thank you for everything, Mr. Mike Bonin. Fuck, Fuck you, you, too. We have Craig R. and uh, Jer Jed Harriot. That's right. So, they already start my clock. So, where is Jose Weezer? Nowhere. Because Mike... Jose Weezer don't give a shit about the topic of homelessness because he's been homeless dumping his homeless constituencies into CD6 and CD1. How do I know that? Ask Meg Barclay. She knows about it. So all of this shit, cops do not cure homeless conditions. Leadership like the Anaheim City Council does. So you fuckers, you don't give showers to these people for eight, nine, ten fucking years. I've been going to these meetings. Surprise, we have a hepatitis issue. Surprise, we don't have any showers. We don't have any housing vouchers. And you get all that money from these white, rich Jew taxpayers, and you spend the money on what? Developments for developers, not for homeless. You keep lying. The goddamn KNX radio woman is out in the hallway waiting to blow Mike Bond in, but he don't go that way. You see how it goes. This fucking city has no media. On, uh, the There's no media. That are in this right. committee. That's right. Police department and homeless and outreach. And uh, you know, the only outreach a cop can give somebody is to put those bracelets on them. That's it. Cops are, are for. Law enforcement, they're not for social gatherings, they're not for social justice. It's not going to work. So, you know, like today, you got one media person who's not even going to come in this fucking room to cover this story. They're not going to listen to the community. They're not going to listen to the people here. The only thing that they were here for is to blow Mike Bonin. And for the record, You're off talk off. Mike Bonin. 
<laughs> uh, the entertainment. Um, in reference to uh, item one, I note the subtle change in language from uh, funding of LASA emergency response teams, quote, in support of LAPD uh, hope teams, changed to, to work with LAPD uh, hope teams. This begs the question of exactly what is the purpose of and what is the effect of transferring HCIDLA funds to uh, ERT? Is it really to support LAPD's um, ongoing harassment of and criminalization of the houseless? That's what it appears to me. Viewed from the street level, the, you're, you're being approached by a large contingent of up to 10 police LAPD officers, mm -hmm. plus four sanitizers, plus two people who might actually be able to help you if they're properly motivated, um, if they've been properly trained in what to do, or if they're having a good day, maybe. But in my opinion, it's just another way for LAPD to dip into the cash box. It's their usual effort to benefit themselves monetarily as if they don't already control all the money in this whole damn city. On item two, uh, I won't quote the uh, item, but say that my interpretation of it is, can, quote, can I get some help in understanding what my role is and what I ought to be doing that I'm not doing already? We'll wait and see on that one. Item three, we skid row activists as well as C3 and as I'm sure the UN are uh, waiting for uh, you to, we're in favor of the toilets, but we're waiting for you to bring up the uh, level of uh, skid row hygiene services to at least that of a uh, UN long-term refugee camp. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Jed Perriott. I'm the co-chair of the Housing and Homeless Committee for the Democratic Socialists of America. And um, look, the honeymoon's over, right? H and HHH have been passed, and now we await for results. And yet the streets say the same thing when you go out and talk to folks. It can all be summed up in what a gentleman told me the other day, a man who was evicted via the Ellis Act, who is now living in a tent in an encampment, said, you know, I remember when those were passed a year ago, and um, all I'm seeing is more evictions and more police. And that is shameful to think that right now we're talking about putting H money, my taxpayer dollars, into a police department that already gets 54% of our city budget? That is disgraceful. And let me tell you what these HOPE teams are about, because just this morning, I went to a HOPE outreach encampment sweep to monitor them. Eight police officers and six sanitation workers throwing a woman's belongings out. She frantically was trying to find her cell phone, vital items, her bras, and an officer said, his name was Officer Tavares, said, and I quote, you need to get out of the way right now or I'm going to detain you for, uh, uh, for impeding an investigation. What kind of language is that? So he's criminalizing a woman who's trying to survive on the street. And that kind of language traumatized her. She freaked out and ran. She didn't want another citation because... A NARC unit gave her one a day earlier for having her tent up at 6.30 a.m., only half an hour after the 9 to 6 window that we give them during this housing crisis. Other officers there recoiled as I showed up with my camera. As they were laughing on the corner, they saw me and stiffened up because, uh-oh, we're being watched. We actually have to be held accountable now. And the lead officer said, well, encampments are full of criminals, so... <sighs> Thank you. The police do not belong in homeless outreach. Thank you. None of them belong there today. Please don't disrupt the meeting uh, anymore, Ms. Autry. Can we read item number one into the record? Yes, sir. Item number one is a CAO report relative to funding recommendation for the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, emergency response teams, working with the Los Angeles Police Department's homeless outreach and proactive engagement teams. 
All right. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Meg Barclay, City Homeless Coordinator in the Office of the CAO. Uh, the report before you provides recommendations in response to instruction from this committee to identify a report on funding needs and options to ensure continued um, Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority support for um, LAPD's HOPE teams. Uh, this report is re in response to an amendment that was made in, in committee instructing, instructing our office to, to find these funds. Uh, the report provides a brief description of HOPE teams, um, and this funding in itself overall, as you know, is in support of the uh, LASA's emergency response teams that support HOPE teams in addition to the LAPD and sanitation components. Uh, those, those outreach teams are intended to ensure to the greatest extent possible that HOPE teams' interactions with persons experiencing homelessness result in things that beyond enforcement. Uh, the uh, funding, the need for this funding came about as a result of um, the LASA's request for $1.5 million for these teams through the Los Angeles County Measure H revenue planning process. Um, at the end of that process, um, these, the use of these funds was changed from ERTs being dedicated to HOPE teams to being more broadly available to law enforcement countywide. Uh, we negotiated with the county to cover the costs of all of these teams for the first nine months of the year, or first, sorry, first three months of the year, and for five of the teams for the remaining nine months of the year. Um, so the funds recommended in this report in the amount of $509,031 are recommended for um, the remaining four teams for the balance of the year. The source of funds recommended is $1 million that was allocated in the city's general fund for um, general city homeless programs to fund street strategy programs, um, including storage, safe parking, and other council directives. Since this was a directive from council, we recommended the funds come from this source. Um, that actually concludes my presentation. So we ask for your approval of the recommendations. Thank you so uh, much. I'm sure there's going to be discussion on this, but I wanted to uh, point out that Captain Dominic Choi is in the audience. If you could make yourself known. Uh, joining us, um, becoming the uh, new commander for LAPD, the LAPD homelessness work, uh, comes out of Pacific Division uh, and Southwest before that. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Uh, questions and uh, comments, colleagues, before we go to general public comment? Mr. Price? Uh, just one, I, I certainly support this. I think uh, anything we can do to beef up the HOPE teams is, uh, is where we want to go. I just want to make sure, though, that we're not, uh, you know, shortchanging uh, storage and safe parking uh, initiatives. I know mm -hmm. so we've had some uh, issues in rolling them out, but I think it's a, it's a valuable pot we should maintain, and I don't want to, uh, you know, discard these programs uh, in yeah. exchange for yeah, at, at this time, the about $490,000 remains in that line item for those purposes. We've been working on identifying a number of potential sites for storage and safe parking haven't been successful yet. Um, that, so and we figured until we had a need that ex exceeded the amount of funding available, this source was available for this purpose. Um, at, we can undergo a similar process if we have a need to add to this line item um, once hopefully we're able to move forward with um, those other types of services. Any other questions, comments, Mr. Bonin? Uh, yeah. Um, I think this is actually murkier and, and more nuanced than staff presents and that some of the public comment represented. Um, I I can see some merit to this. I think there are things that are great about the HOPE teams. I think there are things that need to be improved about the HOPE teams. Uh, but I can't support this today um, because uh, we made, when we come, came up with the homelessness, the comprehensive homelessness strategy, like a series of promises and commitments about how we were going to do things. And I remember vividly the, the chart that Miguel Santana had that showed up front the first few years, lots of stuff being done for street services, declining and diminishing, while permanent supportive housing expenditures and, and mm -hmm. provision went up. And I have a feeling, even though I put in an urgent motion nearly a month ago, that when we get to item three, 
um, where we don't have an action item yet, one of the things I'm going to hear is that it's going to be difficult to find resources for attendance for the bathrooms. And until we start doing more, I mean, we, we have not, we, we're providing sh fewer shelter beds than we did when we started this. Um, uh, we uh, have added Lava May, which is great. We should be expanding that even more. Um, uh, Mr. Price has started um, uh, the storage. Uh, I've just secured a couple weeks ago in council uh, several hundred thousand dollars more for uh, safe parking uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, but we're still not, we're, we're not doing enough of the street stuff. We're not doing enough of the stuff that, that acknowledges that there are tens of thousands of people who are sleeping on the street tonight. So uh, uh, it, 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 it may be a futile gesture, but I, I can't support this until we, we, we start doing that. And particularly when we're going to get to the item on, on bathrooms later, and, and we're not going to wind up having bathrooms on the street next week, I can't see taking money out of homeless programs uh, and putting it uh, into, as folks have said, uh, the department that gets the bulk of our general fund. I, un I understand your concern. We have been working very, very hard with a number of council offices trying to identify sites for those types. That's the most difficult thing, as you know, is citing these, the facilities for these kinds of services. Um, and in the event that we are able to establish or identify sites, there is still the time lag needed to actually rehabilitate and get the sites ready to have the services there to fund. So we felt that given that, that time frame, um, Again, I think we would definitely undertake a similar process once we have, when we have the need for service needs that exceed what, what's left in this line item. But yeah, I understand your concern. We're definitely pushing hard on all of those fronts. It's just taking, it's really difficult. Yeah. So uh, Councilmember uh, Bonin laid out a, just a general frame that I'd like to hear you speak to about the how the strategic plan said we ramp up street services, so showers, bathrooms, all the rest um, in this first stage. The HOPE teams, as popular as they are, were not a part of that discussion, as I remember. Um, and so, one, uh, can you give us your opinion about the ramping up part? Are we doing that? If so, what are, the, what are sort of the benchmarks of that? And how does that investment compare to the investment in the HOPE teams? Well, I think that the investment, as you know, the investment in a new navigation center in CD8 is significant and is getting, we're pushing that as long as, as, as hard as we can, as fast as we can, but the construction on that is going to take a while. Um, and, and that's a pretty significant investment in that, in that one, in that individual facility. Um, there are a number of other, um, we've, are the CAO's office, the Asset Management and Municipal Services divisions in the CAO's office are reviewing city properties, not only for affordable housing, but also potentially as appropriate sites for things like storage and shelter. Um, and to the extent that we are, we find, um, we find appropriate sites and, and gain support from council offices representing those areas, we, we hope to be able to bring more of those online. As far as the funding right now that's being invested, there's funding in the city homeless budget for mobile showers. Um, and the issue with that has always been finding an operator that is willing to use public money. Um, I think Lava May is about at the capacity that they're willing to operate um, right now. And, and there hasn't been, I think LASA has done at least one solicitation for uh, mobile showers, maybe two, and has not gotten responses uh, from providers that are in the city. So it's been um, difficult finding the provider community right now, too, with, with all of the added Measure H funding and funding that we put in for rapid rehousing last year, for example, a very significant increase in services. They're, they're at capacity doing what they're already been asked to do, and so looking for them to take on new lines of business, as it were, um, new services that are not what they're currently focusing on, is, I think is proving to be relatively difficult. Um, but to the extent that we're able to, I think to the extent that we're able to identify facilities and get them ready, that's attractive to an operator because we're not asking them to site as well. So that's what we're, that's really where we're pushing right now is trying to find sites that would be appropriate for this. So if, uh, and please tell me if I'm not characterizing uh, what you said correctly, 
that primarily the, the financial investment is there, uh, but what you're encountering is a log logistical problems with regard to siting, which yeah. I have a question about, and then uh, human material problems with regard to finding the people that can actually do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so with regard to sightings, let me just be clear I'm understanding this correctly. A mobile shower and mobile restrooms have to have an agreement that they can drive up to a corner and give people showers? Well, mobile showers is more about the operators. There's okay. been a lot of uh, cooperation from other city services around getting the hookups to water and, yeah. and for those kinds of things. That's really, I think, more of an operator okay. issue. Um, mobile bathrooms is a, is a model that nobody is doing in LA right now. And so we're actually, we've been doing a lot of research since you introduced your motion, Mr. Bonin, into the costs and what sorts of contracting um, options are available to us to get something like that deployed relatively quickly. Uh, but it is something that we're having to sort of conceptualize ourselves before we try to find um, people who can, can I, I thought operate. San Francisco was, was doing something similar to that. Excuse me? I thought San Francisco was doing the... Uh... Oh, yeah, not in the city. I'm sorry. There's not an operator in the city that's doing that that we could say, hey, let's expand what you're doing if you had more money. Um, so it's, we are to the, there is a model, we're researching the San Francisco model, but having to replicate it here is, um, well, you know, we'll take, we're just trying to figure out what that will take. Uh, okay, we have, uh, uh, I, I just add yes, sir, that. Uh, Mr. Bonin. I, I appreciate everything you said, and there, there's considerable truth to the, um, the, 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 the citing issues. You know, I give, uh, Mr. Harris Dawson and Mr. Buscaino and, and Mr. Price, uh, much more credit uh, because they've been able to move forward on storage a lot faster than I have. Um, you know, I'm moving forward on hopefully three permanent supportive housing things in my district. I think everybody's trying to do stuff. Siting mm -hmm. definitely is an issue. And I'm not trying to, 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 to point the finger at any one person or any one agency, but I think collectively, institutionally, um, we have not... Um, uh, uh, instituted or expressed a sense of urgency about the street strategy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know that LASA issued an RFP for uh, safe parking. It was a disastrous RFP. Nobody wanted to respond to it. Um, we could have done a better job with the RFP, a better job selling it. Um, or we can do a better job leaning on the spa leads and saying, you should be doing this as part of your contract because we're making your job easier because you will know where people will be at night that you're trying to provide services to during the day. Um, we have not, that I know of, uh, 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 the, the city or Lhasa or the county or all of us convened a huge meeting of faith leaders throughout Los Angeles and said, we have now enabled safe parking. Here's what you could do, here's what's legal, uh, you're, you're not going to get in trouble if you do this. Like, it doesn't seem yet that, that this is sort of where we're putting our shoulder. And again, it's not any one person's fault or any one agency's. I think it's just we're, we're, we're doing the things that, that, that have sort of reflexively in the budgets in past years been easier for us to do. Hope teams, ERT, permanent supportive housing. And the stuff that's, that's harder because it's newer is just, I think we just need to make it a bigger priority. Mm -hmm. In light of fire, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I mean, the just to add to, and I promise we'll go to public comment unless you have something to add, <laughs> Ms. Rodriguez. I think you know to to Mr. Bonin's point, which I uh, certainly concur with. Uh, although I'm likely to support this, it, you know, it's also true that there are personnel problems in the police department and in sanitation. Right? Any of us can drive in our districts and point to places where we need more sanitation or we need more police officers. But the, the concern from this side is that's getting figured out and we're paying for it. Mm -hmm. On the other side, it just, it doesn't feel like it's getting figured out. Uh, and so, you know, the, the, or getting figured out with the urgency that it needs to. So for example, in my district, I feel like I've been saying from the beginning, there are a bunch of churches that would love to do safe parking. None of them are in the position to interact with LASA to administrate, to interact in an administrative way with loss. I mean, they don't have somebody sitting in the church every day answering the phone and filling out forms and doing, like, they just don't have that. And so 
we need to figure out a way to facilitate that work to put them in the position to do that. Uh, and it, it, it um, feels like there's less action around that uh, than there is around, around the HOPE teams. And certainly all of us get calls uh, from people, you know, I mean, if we just did it based on our calls, we could probably have three HOPE teams per district, probably. I mean, so we, so we get it uh, on the one hand, but, but in terms of being leadership, uh, we've laid out a plan. We want to follow the plan, and we want to. We don't want to wait for calls. We want to be out front of the, the issue. So, um, I'm going to stop and do <laughs> public comment. Actually, I will. Mr. Rodriguez, just to to really support everything that you just finished saying, because again, in my district, one of the biggest challenges that we have is, you know, we have some of the shelters, but if and that are operating out of these uh, out of these churches in contract, um, but if we do it wrong. We won't allow ourselves the capacity to continue to do the work that we need, and this is the work that we need. And so while I completely support, you know, the HOPE teams and what they're doing in the intervention side, there is that longer-term kind of effort that needs to be happen happening concurrently, and there just has to be a greater sense of urgency applied to that as well uh, for all the reasons that you just, you know, stated. So I just, just to acknowledge that as well, it is definitely a high priority uh, for me and my district uh, as it relates to some of the services that are being provided right now. Yeah, let, let, let me chime in because uh, in my district, uh, Mr. Bynes, a little correction, we don't really have storage, but we are doing the showers and we're doing the safe parking. And, and we need to be doing more of that. Uh, and, and I think cause sometimes we're challenged by not doing, we're not getting responses because we're not doing the right kind of outreach. And so I agree, I think we should be really targeting that in a, in a much more creative way, in addition to the other things we're doing, but we can't forget the stuff on the ground, so. Thank you. All right, uh, we have uh, Mr. Eddie H., John Motter, General Do uh, Dojan. Dogon. Did you get my card? I have more cards, I'll read through them, but I don't think I have yours. I submitted a card. Can you would submit? Yes, sir. Uh, 88, Skiro Community Improvement Coalition. And just a second, set the record straight quickly. Uh, I heard someone say, talk about Lava May. Myself and there's a couple other individuals here from LA CAM who are instrumental in bringing Lava May to the city in unison with uh, the mayor's office. So that was a community based solution within itself. I uh, just first want to talk about uh, a site. Uh, our coalition, we have a site. We have a hygiene center that will be up and running within the next couple of weeks with portable showers, portable restrooms, kiosks, and things of that nature. I just want to say that, and I heard Mr. Bonner talk about the LAPD. For the last several years, they get over 50% of the budget, and that's billions and billions of dollars. Uh, they need not be in the, the field of uh, trying to place people uh, who are homeless into housing. That can be better utilized, those funds can be better utilized. And maybe progressively in a community-based solution, I'll say this very quickly. How about hiring some individuals from the neighborhood who know the people in the neighborhood, who are comfortable with individuals in the neighborhood, who wouldn't set them off by blue uniforms. Got to wrap up your thought, but thank yeah. you. Yeah. Who, who wouldn't set them off for blue uniforms to be persons to, to be on part of that outreach team? You know, let's, let's think about progressing beyond the norm. Uh, and again, our site will be up and running. Thank you. Uh, pretty soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Where will that site be? Where, where is that site going to be? It's going to be on Crocker, right behind the Weingart Center. Thank you. It's supposed to, supposed to launch November 1st. Hold up. You're on. All right, General Dogon, uh, every homeless data shows that uh, homeless folks respond better to outreachers when the police is not present. And C3, right, is a prime example of that. C3 does outreach without the police, and their numbers are far greater than Hope Team. And I ask you to look at their records and you will see that, right? Uh, another thing is um, uh, LAPD arrests are up 48% on the homeless. So we see what type of outreach you really are doing, right? And, and with the cost of 40 cops, you know, uh, 40 cops, you put more money in to outreach than you getting out in service. What are you supposed to be asking these homeless people uh, when you go talk to them? What are you, what are you trying to do? I mean, you, you can't give them what they want, because what they want is house keys. 
and you can't give them that. But if you kick those 40 cops to the side, you can house those 40 people today. You know what I mean? With the salary, you're going to pay those cops, right? But if not, you only, your, your, your whole program is turning into false hope because you can't deliver, understand me, what people need. Give us hygiene centers right now, what we just talked about. Give us trash can. That's what we need post Triple H, not more police. That's right. My name is John Mata. I'm a homeless rights advocate with Ground Game LA. I'm also a member of About Face, Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans Against the War, where we continue to fight against the militarization of our communities at home. And I don't want to see another dime earmarked for homelessness and solving homelessness and providing services for our homeless members of our community going to the police. And I'll tell you what, I canvassed on behalf of Measure H. I knocked on close to a thousand doors, talked to hundreds of people all across Los Angeles, as did my fellow volunteers. They had lots of great ideas of what they want to see Measure H money go to. Not a single one wanted to see more policing, more of the same failed policies and uh, abuse going towards our homelessness. I also canvassed the entirety of Skid Row in the lead up to the Skid Row Neighborhood Council several times and I continue to do outreach by myself without a police escort, if you can believe that, all through Skid Row. And they had lots of great ideas too, what they would have liked to see that money go towards, which of course they didn't get. And not a single one of those members of our community who do get a voice in this government and the decisions being made, not a single one of them want to see more policing. That's all I have to say. To David Bush, Megan Choi, Jessica. I was one of the earliest submitter of a card. How come my name is in call? We're not finished calling names. But I was one of the earliest. <laughs> uh, David Bush. Uh, homeless resident in Venice, been homeless for 20 years. Um, just want to add my voice to those here opposed to sending more money to the HOPE teams at this time, especially out of funds that should be going to storage and parking, safe parking and, and toilets and these other emergency things that we need. Um, in Venice, uh, the outreach by sanitation workers and police has resulted in last month the seizure of 40 people's blankets, tents, sleeping bags. And it appears that most of them were hauled off to the trash. They were hauled off from a spot that sanitation workers had previously told them was where they should put their stuff during the cleanup down there that takes place every week on Friday in Venice. So there's just uh, so many problems. Hope teams are designed to respond to community members who don't want to solve homeless problems, but just want to get them out of their neighborhoods. And that's a problem that of abuse of the HOPE teams. Thank you. Ms. Choi. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Megan Choi. I'm with the East Hollywood Neighborhood Council, and I'm an affiliate of Power, People Organized with Westside Renewal. I wanted to thank Councilmember Bonin for his recent support of Anna Cruz, one of our public housing residents. Even though she was evicted, it meant a lot. Um, I'm just here to say in passing, H, the city overwhelmingly stated that we must end the homelessness crisis in LA with truly supportive systemic efforts. Uh, many members of my community gathered support for this measure with the promise that the funding would go towards direct services, mental health, supportive housing, uh, because that was obvious. That's how you end chronic homelessness. Um, LAPD's budget is already 53.4 percent of the unrestricted funds. I think that's pretty high. Um, so we know Angelinos are no longer interested in Band-Aid measures. The overwhelming support for H was definitive proof of that. Um, so we urge you to really try to uphold the will of the people and this will become a pressing issue. The trend won't decrease. Thanks. Hi, my name is Jessica Salins. I'm an organizer with Ground Game LA. Uh, we know that criminalization does not work in our communities. We know that rehabilitation does. We know that restorative justice does. We know that transformative justice does. We know the days are over where we have uh, fancy public uh, departments and that it's the people on the ground who are interacting with the people that are facing these crises day to day, deserve the funding, deserve that ground. 
uh, grassroots resources and support uh, to continue doing the good work. I wanted to read some numbers to you. Um, LAPD's adopted budget for the 2017-18 year is $2,722,000,000. Sanitation is $657 million. Housing and community investment is $131 million. I think there's some problems in those numbers. You as council members have the ability to change those numbers. I'd also like to say it's strange to hear about safe parking when so many on this board have criminalized people living in their cars who are experiencing homelessness. We need to stop criminalizing and rehabilitate. Thank you. Marianne Curtis, <laughs> Claudia Brick, and you, sir. Please stop disrupting the meeting. Um, Mary Ann Curtis with the Freedom Socialist Party. Um, I've been at many hearings. There are many committees that are working on the housing and homeless issue in the city. Repeatedly, you are hearing from all of us that we do not want any of these dollars, Proposition H, going to the police. And I mean, just let's, this is craziness. It just keeps coming back in these things that you can hardly make sense of that we got for this hearing. So um, the other thing is the city controller has repeatedly said there is plenty of city property available that right now you could put up whatever, tiny houses, there could be Habitat for Humanity could put something up. You could provide the showers, the laundry. This is an emergency. I think you really need to see this as an emergency. Think of it as a, what, a hurricane? Uh, an earthquake and do something. All we're seeing are more and more people in the streets without, and this cannot continue. It's not only a housing and homeless crisis, it's a health crisis. And just urge you to move forward. Thank you. My name's Claudia Brick. I'm a resident of Mr. Harris Dawson's district and a social justice activist here in LA. You people should be ashamed of yourselves for even considering taking H and HHH money to give back to the police department who all they do is roust people and throw away their stuff. That you, they have enough money in their budget to do that already. Um, that plus, then it's not the homeless people's fault that the city and the agencies did not budget for this HOPE teams and that, so you're trying to get the money out of the HHH stuff. So that's hooey. Um, the city's coordinated entry program has been in existence for years. Use the resources and the services you have already to, um, to get people services. And before you throw me out, I want to thank Mr. Bonin for getting Lava May going. If you all want to see how, um, San Francisco's pit stop program works. We have that. The Lava May's latest uh, buggy here. There's one trailer with three cubbies of a toilet, a sink, and a shower. If you want, these are cost fifty thousand dollars a piece. If you have five hundred thousand dollars out of HHH money that you want to spend, buy ten of those and get this thing going. This is a homeless and poverty committee. Just because LASA recommend that they, for funding, they recommend LASA work together with LAPD is totally re rejected by the public community. If you want to provide service and housing for the homeless, do not work with the LAPD. They are not a social service entity. They are an authoritarian, militarized force. They, they need social workers, not police department that comes with weapons. That's no way to treat homeless people and provide housing for them. We don't have enough time. We need two, two hours. LAPD is not social workers. Uh, so keep, keep, uh, whatever you could do, keep the funding away from them because the people that voted for HHH and Measure uh, 8 Service for the Homeless did not vote for LAPD. Thank you so much. LAPD to take a lot of the funds.
and suck all the government money off of social services. Uh, Meg Barclay, City Homeless Coordinator again. I just wanted to clarify for the record that this funding is not going to LAPD. There is no money in the City Homeless Budget for LAPD. This is going for Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority emergency response teams, outreach workers that work with the HOPE teams. And also there is no Measure H or- Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. People didn't talk while you all were talking. She didn't jump up and say you didn't know what you were talking about when you said the money was going to LAPD, so let's respect the people that are at the mic. Also, just to clarify that the funding has come, is from a um, city general fund allocation, um, not Measure H and not Proposition HHH. It's, none, of that, none of this money is coming from those two measures. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, is there any more discussion on uh, this matter? Uh, if not, I'd move that uh, we uh, send this item uh, to council uh, in the affirmative. Uh, all those in favor? All right. All those opposed? No. You just had public comment. Great. That's what we just did. All right. Uh, can you read item number two into the record? Yes, sir. Item number two is a CAO report or a CAO2 report relative to motion by Council Members Harris, Dawson, and Wizar related to a memorandum of understanding with the County of Los Angeles and the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles to establish roles and align resources needed to develop permanent supportive housing. All right, you're on one more time. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Meg Barclay, City Homeless Coordinator in the CAO's office. Um, the report before you recommends approval of the attached of an attached memorandum of understanding between the City of Los Angeles, the County of Los Angeles, and the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles, um, and authorizes the and requests that you or recommends that you authorize the General Manager of the um, Housing and Community Investment Department to execute this MOU on behalf of the city. Um, in, after Measure H was approved and after the approval of the first revenue allocations, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors adopted a motion with a template for a memorandum of understanding between cities and public housing, or, yeah, public housing authorities to finance all the three needed components for permanent supportive housing. As you know, that includes the capital, the rental, uh, rental subsidy, which provides operating funding for the buildings, and the supportive services that go with the units and for the tenants of the units. Um, so the attached MOU will guarantee that for every unit of permanent supportive housing that the city funds, which is what Proposition HHH is funding, the um, county will commit the supportive services and funding for the supportive services, and HACLA will commit um, project-based Section 8 vouchers to um, provide the operating subsidy for those units. Um, when, once that motion was approved by the County Board of Supervisors, the Mayor's Office led a team, including the CAO, the CLA, HCID, and HACLA to negotiate this, the MOU with the county, and there are, um, and so that, that resulting MOU is included, or is attached to this report. The um, MOU represents a major financial commitment by all, by all three of the parties, obviously Proposition HHH, and then the first funding round, um, Proposition HHH provided up to $220,000 of subsidy per unit, um, per unit funded, and the county's commitment will amount to an average of at least $450 per unit in the intensive case management services, in addition to other health, mental health, or substance abuse treatment services, depending on the population being served in the building. HACLA's project-based vouchers provide an average monthly rental subsidy of about $878 per PSH unit. And the tenant selection under this MOU will be made through the coordinated entry system, although 20% of the units can be um, filled through the county Department of Health Services client tracking system as well, but this is intended to make sure that the clients with the greatest needs are prioritized for these PSH units. So um, once, the, once the council and the mayor provide the authority, HCID will execute this um, agreement with HACLA and the county on behalf of the city. It will go into effect on the day it is signed, and the term of the agreement is 10 years. After five years, however, given um, the long-term questions about 
or how many vouchers may be available. Um, HACLA, we would renegotiate the um, number of units HACLA is able to make available for um, our PBVs. And, um, oh, this, the, the MOU addresses the strategy 10A in the city's comprehensive homeless strategy. Questions, comments, colleagues? I, I just want to thank, uh, I want to thank Mr. Well, I want to thank staff for getting this done, obviously, because it's, the, the fine print was a pain in the butt, but I really want to thank Mr. Harris Dawson and Mr. Ridley Thomas, who I think without the two of you, this, this promise that was made to the voters about the level of cooperation between the two levels of government wouldn't have, have finally happened. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I just had a question with regards to the county provide the county coordination with some of the mm -hmm. you know joint projects that are happening with nonprofit uh, providers on the permanent supportive housing projects, mm -hmm. and how the county is going to interact with some of the private uh, partnership developments that are happening for to cre construct permanent supportive housing, and to what our assurances are to try and provide uh, on-site services. Oh, um, yeah, so the county is agreeing to fund the services, but each of the of the unit, or the projects that are funded, and um, Rushmore Servant is the general manager of how HSA can speak to this as well, but they have a service plan that comes with the proposal for funding for each of those units that would um, have to be deemed appropriate for the population that's being served. But as far as, well, Rush, I can speak to that, that real quickly, and thank you very much for the question. And I do uh, also agree this is historic. We obviously had the passage of H as well as HHH, but then to codify the agreement between the county and the city to provide this, this level of service and funding is, is really uh, tremendous and obviously reflects the leadership of the council, the mayor, and obviously the county board of supervisors. But to your question specifically on on-site, that's our preference. We have a mandatory ratio of one full-time equivalent case manager for uh, no more than 20 uh, so chronic supportive housing units. Most of our projects are over 20 units, so you always have something on site. Now, there could be a one-off occasion where you have scattered sites. In that case, they have to be within a quarter mile. And keep in mind, that's the case manager. That's basically uh, someone that is working with each of the uh, homeless individual or families. Uh, they're coordinating the services. Not necessarily all the services are going to be on site, but you have a case manager on site, and we, requ we have a required ratio. And then with each service plan, we, actually, we mandate that the developer tell us who they're going to be working with which county departments and they that county department also has to codify that plan as well so there is uh, a, uh, a method by which when we work with the developers we know in advance before we final finalize the financing we know what the service plan is going to be and it's been approved by the appropriate uh, county department and we'll have that appropriate ratio and so the related services based on the uh, population that is projected to be residing in that, that they're going to right. have accessibility. Right, there's that. different ratios depending on the, the type of uh, individual that they intend to house. I think one important thing about that too is the commitment to, to develop a joint application for all three of these, the capital, the services, and the rental voucher, so that at the beginning and at the conceptualization of the, of the project, all of those things are reviewed by all three parties of the MOU. We'll right, and to that end right now, that's a, that's a very good point, uh, Meg, is that right now the Housing Authority and uh, HCID, we share the same platform, uh, and we're working right now with the county to create a cloud-based application so that uh, when developers apply, they only apply once, and that, that information is shared by the county, Housing Authority, as well as HCID. So we've got two of the three. We'll make it in a, a cloud-based application here shortly, so all three agencies that are part of this MOU will be uh, able to have that online for uh, developers. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Uh, we have uh, one public comment card on this item. Wendy Gator. Wendy? There she is. Hello, my name is Wendy Gator, and I am a graduate of Skid Row. In 2013, I graduated from the Weinhardt Center through the Open Door Program. After being on Skid Row 
for 20 years, in and out, I have realized a lot of things. But as one of our volunteers in our organization has summed it up very well, when you are trying to solve homelessness, you must include the homeless in the discussion. They know what they need and have proven solutions. But for whatever reason, politicians tend to delegate authority to marginally qualified people. A college degree or success in business means nothing unless you truly understand and truly understand you must be homeless. With all the concerns that have been addressed in the past and today, we have to have a basic module because there is no one answer to or one solution to these many problems. And when you try to solve a problem, you have to look at the way we do algebra. And that is you must take things in order. You have to have a logical way of solving the problem. So you have to have a basic module for it all. And in algebra, you must do what's in the brackets and parentheses first before you can arrive to the correct answer. And in doing that, you gotta, we... you got to wrap up. You're, you're okay, up. we have boards and so forth. And those brackets, which is first, when you have a zero participation and you have zero homeless and zero people of poverty on the homeless and poverty board, you therefore cannot come up with the right solution and the right answers. We people on Skid Row and in these organizations, we will have to train the police and train the people on these boards to do an effective job because we have the degrees to do so Thank and you. we have the experience. Thank you. Let's use it. All right, I uh, move that we approve this item. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, just for the record, um, it's the intent of the uh, committee to approve the attached MOU submitted by the CAO between the City of Los Angeles and the County of Los Angeles and HACLA and authorize the general manager of each seat to execute the MOU on behalf of the city. Excellent. Thank you. This, it'll uh, be a historic day when we get this onto the desk of the mayor. Uh, so thank you to everybody who's worked very hard on it. Thank you uh, to the team at the CAO and the folks at the county. Uh, where does that leave us? Item number three? Mm -hmm. Item number three is a motion by council members Bonin, Wieser, and Harris Dawson relative to available funding sources for emergency portable public toilets and associated bathroom attendants. Excellent. So. We have a number of uh, public comment cards. Mr. Bonin, this is quite the popular item. Um, we have uh, Tom Grody, David Bush, Lucia, Mendez, Tom? Yes, sir. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Tom Grody with the No Place to Go Toilet Audit Report in Skid Row. World Toilet Day is November 19th. World Toilet Day began 2001 with the World Toilet Organization. It is now connected to the World Health Organization. World Toilet Day dramatizes the need for sanitation and hygiene. Last year on World Toilet Day, about 10 people protested the lack of toilets and hygiene on Skid Row outside of City Hall. This year, a variety of actions are leading up to November 19th. On September 26, City Council passed a motion requesting a report on funding for toilets and hygiene within 14 days. Was that request fulfilled? Also, hygiene has to do with recovery from trauma, and LAPD is a major source of trauma. Yes. Hi, my name is Lucia Mendez, and I'm just here to support and ask you guys to please uh, to approve the funding for public bathrooms. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Um, David Bush, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a homeless person in Venice. Very glad to be here today. And may you please pass this. I've been homeless for 20 years, on the street in Venice for 10 years. We don't have a single public toilet open anywhere in Venice uh, from 10 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, Councilman Bonin and I have disagreed on some issues. 
but I am proud to come here today and stand up for this, and I'm really thankful that Mike is, and every one of you, I hope you support it. We need to get public restrooms open, and these public restrooms in the beach are a beautiful pro project. Uh, we are going to have what I think is really important going forward is to demonstrate that we also need to have attendance. We've had a history in LA, and I've been on Skid Row for six years myself. When we open up public toilets without attendance, people use them for every need possible. And it, sometimes it's to change their clothes and other things. Um, so this program is designed to have people there monitoring it all the time. And I think that's a really important component that's going to guarantee its success. Please, let's give this a try. Thank you. Uh, Linda Lax, Erica Lee, David Ewing. Good afternoon, council members, and welcome to the new councilwoman. Pleasure to see another woman on the council. My name is Linda Lux. I am the past president of the Venice Neighborhood Council and the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. I currently work for Venice Community Housing, and it's I'm really happy to be here to speak in support of opening the bathrooms. And sad to say that it's because of a public health epidemic. It's just amazing that this hasn't happened before. Uh, but if this is what it takes, you really can't have it both ways. You can't keep the toilets closed and not expect something terrible to happen. And I know there's been feedback from the community um, complaining about all the defecation and urine on the streets, but you can't have it both ways. <laughs> You've got to have bathrooms open. Anyway, I'm really glad to be here. I hope you support this. I hope the full council does. It's long overdue, and um, it's time for the right political will to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Erica Lee. I'm a Venice resident and also happen to work at Venice Community Housing. I am here in support of opening restrooms with attendance. Um, we've actually created a committee of Venice Community Housing, Venice Family Clinic, the St. Joseph Center, and local community members. Um, we've been doing our due diligence, working, um, talking to Pit Stop, uh, Hunter's Family Point, which is the organization running them. We are actually trying to get our own pilot program down in CD11, so we are ready to get going. Um, we've had, we've created a budget to get bathrooms. Um, we're ready to go. We just need funding and we'll work with you. Uh, we worked with Lava May, so we need restrooms. We understand the need. It's a public health issue. It's a human rights issue. It's a women's rights issue. So let's get going. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, committee members. My name is David Ewing. I'm a 40-year Venice resident, longtime homeowner. Um, I just want to say, if a hepatitis A epidemic or outbreak doesn't focus everybody, what will? Uh, you know, what, what will create the political will? So um, the motion you have before you, ex I think, expresses uh, better than I would um, the need and describes the pit stop program, which we have all um, you know, we, we've been talking to people in San Francisco, Sacramento, and other cities uh, with similar programs. The knowledge is out there. It's not a question of methodology. You know, the answers are there. Best practices are there. It's a question of political will. So I would say, I would argue with two things in the, uh, uh, the just the phrasing here in the motion, uh, that the two challenges are funding and proper locations, I would say it's political will and neighborhood pushback, and you have to figure out how to develop one and uh, assuage the other. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Victor N. from Beethoven Street. I don't want to mess up. Uh, Akila Flemings. Eric Ades. How's it going? Um, as far as uh, the homeless issues go, um, bathrooms are just a beginning, and uh, the fact that police are taking away blankets. A friend of mine that I've been trying to help mentally ill off the plane from Florida was raped last night. Two, two, three nights ago, she was uh, kicked off the grass at Ozone Park and told she had to sleep in the dirt or on the sidewalk. Now, this is a uh, a susceptible, mentally ill, bipolar person, like many people that are homeless are bipolar or mentally ill, and they should not be, they need kindness, and they need social workers and not police 
managing them. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aquila Flemings, and I also work with uh, Venice Community Housing. And um, I'm just even shocked that this is even up for a discussion. I don't know what people expect. They expect people just to go in the sand and poop like a cat and cover it up. <laughs> I mean, the people of Venice, well, some of them, they don't want to step in the feces. They complain about the urine being everywhere. Um, I work right across the street from Whole Foods. They don't let any of the homeless people come in and use the restroom. I mean, we have a Hep A epidemic going on. We have women who have cycles every month. I mean, you guys, we've got to get serious. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Eric Ades. I'm with the Los Angeles Community Action Network. LA Can is here to, I and LA Can are here to um, speak in support of this measure. Um, this is something that we strongly urge you to move forward with as soon as possible. Um, this is why the Homeless Poverty Committee was created, to think about solutions that meet the urgent need of folks on the streets right now. Um, I want to echo the, the comments made by others around, um, it's a shame that this, it took issues like hepatitis A to, to bring this to the forefront. This is something that we have kind of been urging in Skid Row for, for years. Um, we've all read the No Place Like Home report. We know that this is a first step, so we urge you to move this forward today, but also want to stress uh, how urgent it is to, to, to go to scale, and not just in Venice, not just in Skid Row, but citywide this is an issue. This is a public health crisis, um, and we need to meet it uh, for what it is. So as H and Triple H um, plans move forward, these are the types of solutions that are necessary to bridge what is the crisis now with the solutions that are going to take years. So again, really strongly urge you all to move this forward today. Karen Lauterbach, Victor De La Cruz, Robert Newmar. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Lauterbach and I'm from Venice Family Clinic. We're a community health center that serves the west side. Um, over 20,000 patients and about 3,500 of them are people that are experiencing homelessness. So I'm here to express um, our support for bathrooms with attendance. Um, Every day we see the impact on people's health by not having such a basic need as a place to go to the bathroom and wash their hands. Um, it impacts our doctor's ability to provide appropriate care and uh, so we just really want to support this effort. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, committee. My name is Robert Newman. I'm Vice President of Administration for the Downtown Los Angeles Neighbor Council and Chair of a Central Cities Ad Hoc Committee. And I just want to say that, the, first of all, I want to thank the community for uh, coming to us and making a presentation. Uh, many of the, the members have worked on this No Place to Go report for a very, very long time. And they are in ground zero, and they know really what's going on. So it's important to, to listen to what they have to say. Uh, for example, like Louise Mabella Frenchie, uh, who presented our committee, we really appreciate it. We submitted a community impact statement, which you'll hear more about from my co-chair, Nate Johnson. And uh, we, it's long overdue. Uh, to, to get these people uh, bathrooms and showers and things that they need. I've been involved in the building of several uh, permanent supportive housing projects over the last 12 years, and so it's very easy to hand somebody, it's very nice to hand somebody keys, and of course they have a bathroom and a shower. But in the interim, while we're, I'll have all this funding in the queue, and, and the people need to have a dignified way also to be able to use those facilities as human beings. So thank, thank you. you for your support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Council Members. I'm Victor Dela Cruz with Manette Phelps and Phillips. I represent Public Storage Incorporated. We have over 100 locations in Los Angeles County, and a lot of those locations have been the sites of major uh, homeless encampments. So we deal with uh, community concerns pretty much on a daily basis. We want to say that we are in very strong support of, uh, of this initiative. Uh, we hope that you implement it as soon as possible, and we'd like to thank Councilman Bonin for his initiative on this. We do urge some caution in connection with siting, just because we hear from our neighbors and we want to be responsive to their concerns. We would urge you to take a look at San Francisco's pit stop program and their siting of these locations. They do them in city parking lots, in parks, and on major arterials. You please do not do them on minor connector streets where it uh, will most dramatically impact residents and that's something that we'd like to be able to do in connection with our uh, residential neighbors. Thank you. Nate Johnson and uh, Greg Spiegel.
My name is Nate Johnson. I'm also a member of the Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council, as Robert alluded to before. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to present our views through the community impact statement, but then also before the committee here. Uh, this is the first deliverable, I guess, we've put together from our ad hoc committee. And we're hoping to work with this committee in the future to address the many issues facing Skid Row. Um, and you know, at both our first and second meeting, one of the major issues and the main thing people talked about was sanitation, hygiene centers, and having an opportunity to have public toilets at all hours of the day. We're all familiar with the reports, but I think the reports such as No Place to Go and Dirty Divide from LA Can a few years ago demonstrate how this is also an opportunity to work with the Skid Row community. People talk a lot about attendance. One of the, few, one of the important points from the Pit Stop program is that attendance should come from the community. Uh, which I think will help build relationships some. Um, in contrast to giving citations to Lava May providers, which is something we've heard about happened at the end of August. I don't know if there's a way to kind of exempt those sorts of providers as they're working in critical areas. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Greg Spiegel from Inner City Law Center. I was one of like 20 or so people who worked on the No Place to Go report, and I made a bunch of copies. Uh, I was surprised to hear um, that funding wouldn't be a problem for these facilities. Um, that is not what we are hearing. Um, the Skid Row Hygiene Center that's being designed is, is really promising. The design is great, but we're talking four to six toilets. Um, that's about one seventeenth of what's needed just in Skid Row, and they're talking about five hundred thousand per. Five hundred thousand is the same amount that you're transferring over to the Hope teams. So. Is, is a zero-sum game right now unless you guys are talking about bringing some money from somewhere. So every money that, all the money that goes away from street strategies is going away from toilets and where else is it going to come from? And again, we need 17 times the amount that is currently be considered for the Skid Row Hygiene Center. Um, in terms of locations, those are real barriers. We want to help. How can we all come together to help you? And fourth, in locations, um, considering opening up city buildings to 24-hour toilet access. It's happened before, apparently. Um, it could happen again. Okay. My, my, my name is Kay Utumi. As the Homeless and Poverty Committee, you can and you should recommend to the Food City Council that the Los Angeles Homeless Service Agency quit working with the LAPD for funding homeless housing and services. The more funding LAPD takes, the less there is for actual housing and services for the homeless. Homelessness is a crisis that needs actual real solution and, and uh, services for the homeless and not criminalizing homeless people. Skid Row homeless have been criminalized for a long time, and uh, that needs to stop right now. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Bonin? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thanks, everybody, who came down and, and, and testified on this. This is, in, in, in government, always a uh, an incredibly difficult conversation to have. There, uh, people, even grown-ups, people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, have a hard time talking about bodily functions. Uh, and um, there's, you know, no glory or TV cameras when you do a ribbon cutting for a toilet. Um, but this is an absolute, it's a, it's, th this is a law of nature, law of supply and demand. Uh, there is an absolute demand for people to urinate and defecate. And there is a tremendous lack of supply of places to do that. So it is absolutely unsurprising that we have a public health crisis. And it is absolutely unsurprising that I get complaints from businesses or from residents in my district that they walk out of their homes in the morning and see feces on the parkway or in their alleyways. It is the, the absolutely inevitable conclusion of the policy decisions the government, city government made in the, in, over, over a decade ago when we said instead of guaranteeing you a right to shelter, we guarantee you a right to a sidewalk uh, and not providing any bathrooms. The easiest thing to be would be provide shelter where they have bathrooms. 
we need to fix this. Um, I, I, I wish, to those who came down and said, please pass the motion, that passing the motion today would actually result in something. I'm sorry to disabuse you of it. It actually begins the process of doing something. As we have seen with safe parking, as we have seen with shelters, it, the, 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 the first step is you have to create the legal framework, and then you have to find the funding. And I want to jumpstart the legal framework and the funding so we can get the bathrooms. Earlier today, the Rec and Parks Board recommended that the council approve an ordinance, which we will do uh, hopefully in the next few weeks, to allow uh, Rec and Parks to open uh, a set of bathrooms at Venice Beach 24-7. The, the money for Rec and Parks to do that is in the budget. I got it in last year, but we're probably going to need some additional money for attendance. Uh, so we need to have attendance. We have, not only does the government not provide the, the, the restrooms, we've, we, we make it difficult for anybody else to provide it. So it was sort of a, a, a juggling act a couple of years ago to get Lava May here. We had to have an agency. Then we had to make sure that they could park somewhere. We had to make sure they could hook up to the water system, all that kind of stuff. We have, I've got the Venice Family Clinic, I've got others who want to provide uh, and help service uh, uh, portable restrooms. Uh, and uh, we should allow that to happen. And we have some rules that make it difficult to put things in the public right away, and we have to, to, to modify those. And then we have the, the pit stop example in, in, in San Francisco. Um, we needn't recreate the wheel. I mean, we can look at what they've done and see how we might modify it here. Uh, but um, uh, I, I, was, I, I was a no on that earlier vote today because that was $500,000 that maybe we can use for bathrooms or for pit stop. Uh, and first things first is something I was taught when I was young, and one of the first things that has to be first is where the hell do people go to the bathroom? Um, so uh, uh, the, the motion asks for uh, a number of things. Uh, one is that... Uh, we uh, uh, immediately uh, report back in consultation with uh, uh, not just the homeless coordinator and, and city agencies, but the, the city health commission um, on what the public health crisis is um, and what, what their definition of the need for additional bathrooms is. We are going to hear from the county shortly about what the need for bathrooms is. Mm -hmm. now, the county ain't coming up with the money to provide the bathrooms. Uh, they're just going to tell us where we need them. And then everybody's going to look to us and they're going to say, are you going to provide the bathrooms? And we need to be prepared for that. There's some places we know we need them. We need them in Skid Row. We need them in Venice. We need them in Hollywood, probably. Um, and the county's going to tell us other places we need to do it. So we need to have that back. But then we also have to have the analysis of, um, of what we would have to do to, to change some of our uh, public right-of-way laws to, to make these easier to place. Um, but we need to have the funding for attendance, um, for places where someone could place a portable restroom now. Um, so the, the most immediate report back is on how we could scale up pit stop or something similar here and what funding we could use for uh, attendance uh, right away for the places that are, are willing to do it. We, should, we, we shouldn't um, uh, penalize or impede anyone who's trying to find the solution and... Um, you know, maybe some of the money that the extra money I got for safe parking can be used for restrooms, which could be put online sooner. Uh, maybe uh, there's other money that is available in the budget that can be reprogrammed. But we, we can't say we have $500,000 to add to ERT and then come back a couple weeks later and say we don't have money for, for restroom attendance. Um, Understood. Yeah. So uh, Meg Barclay, City Homeless Coordinator, CAO, uh, we actually have started, um, bef even before your, your motion was introduced, has started looking at budgets and options for what it would cost to, um, to pay for, for portable restrooms and also with attendance. So we are looking, there are a number of options that we've been looking at. And also um, we've been reviewing the last year's, um, whatever savings are left from last year's homeless budget, and um, even looking at this year and if there's money that isn't moving that should be put towards a more immediate need. So that process is definitely underway. How soon can we get a report back? That is a good question. I mean, the, the motion calls for two weeks, so hopefully within that period okay, of time. Okay, good. I mean, I, I, I want to yeah. keep infusing the conversation with the sense of urgency because 
I always remember the Northridge, 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 Northridge earthquake, and it, it can't take us longer to open bathrooms than it took Dick Reardon to get the 10 freeway re reopened. I mean, that's, that's, that should be our goal, is mm -hmm. can we beat that timeline? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any other discussion on this matter? Oh, we just did public comment. Oh. Actually, come on up. You're so eloquent. We're going to let you speak without a card. How about that? But it was a card. I gave it to Mr. We, Eric. We pulled out cards yeah, for both. Let's go. Okay, so my name is Marianne Curtis. I'm with the Freedom Socialist Party. Um, I have a, a really specific question. Uh, you all probably saw the LA Times um, editorial on Thursday, July 12th, which says city officials don't deny that there's a public health crisis and that more toilets are needed. LA Mayor, Mayor Eric Garcetti has earmarked 1.4 million in the current budget for Skid Row toilets and maintenance. So what's up? Why do we need more reports? It's all here. They just need to do it. Thank you. To echo a lot of what's already been said, I've been going to meetings regarding homelessness and problems for years. And at every meeting that addresses the issue of homelessness, somebody raises the issue of it being a health crisis. And it's taken till we have a hep C outbreak or a hep A outbreak for it to be addressed. I cannot believe that it's taken this long. So my next question then, Mr. Bonin, is how long are you going to wait for these report backs before we can move? Thank you. So it's, it, uh, it says two weeks, and I believe you submitted this before we had a hep outbreak, right? No. You didn't? Oh. Well, <laughs> forget to mention also that the mayor's office has also been working on with loss on opening an, a hygiene station that is supposed to open relatively soon as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who came in to participate in uh, this matter there. I will note um, as recently as this month, uh, officials from this city uh, put out reports suggesting that if you make life ha harder for homeless, they'll go away uh, and that their problems will go away. And what we've seen in the, in the, since that time, with the Hep, hep C outbreak, is that, in fact, we make it harder for all of us uh, when we don't address the real basic need of human beings going to the bathroom, which they don't stop doing, even if you don't provide bathrooms for them. Uh, so I uh, ask for enthusiastic approval of this matter. Uh, hearing no objection, that'll be the order. I believe we're adjourned, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.